All right, in the following video, we're gonna talk about triggers and why it's useful for the timer to have a trigger. So the simple circuit would be like, like this. Timer gonna connect to the load, uh, power, and uh, button would trigger something. And why it's useful? Because you can trigger the timer, the count of time, or some other functions uh, based on a event other than supplying the power or not supplying the power to the timer it could be uh, so the what trigger could be trigger trigger could be a, a voltage coming from the other sources maybe power from another circuit or power to the circuit itself it could be a signal from one of the sensors um, so that's the voltage uh, example and also it could be a contact a dry contact like a switch a button um, so let's take a look what we have here so we have a diagram of the uh, what we would call a high trigger so the trigger would trigger the event when the signal on the trigger wire goes from zero to the high voltage and high voltage meaning the power supply it doesn't have to go to the power supply it could go just a couple volts uh, if you read at the bottom, it will tell you that the low voltage uh, would be less than 0.5 volts and anything more than 0.0 volts would consider it to be a high voltage. Um, so in this case, we're supplying the power to the timer and uh, once the trigger goes from zero to some uh, voltage, it will trigger the event. In this case, it will supply power for a period of time. Okay. Uh, so the, what is the low trigger? It's the opposite of the high trigger. It goes, it triggers the event when the voltage goes from high to low. So in this case, the voltage was high, and let's say you have a switch that connects the wire to the ground, and that's where you want to trigger the uh, time. So in this case, once the uh, voltage drops to zero, then the event uh, starts. So this is just the explanation what the high trigger and uh, and the uh, low trigger and if you look at the manual you will find the information also on the uh, pool configuration so uh, in order for the wires to stay in order to use a uh, open context like a, a button or the switch connecting for, for, uh, to the power for example we need to make sure that the, that the timer wire stays very low and how do we ensure that well we can connect the re, uh, resistor to it but that's already done in the timer uh, inside the timer the only thing you would need is to configure it that way you would need to configure for the uh, trigger wire to be pulled to low so on a high voltage you can trigger something same thing with the uh, uh, triggering an event by connecting the switch and the timer to the ground and this is prepared way and this is uh, because it's easy to connect the buttons to the ground usually uh, so in this case we need to make sure that the wire stays always high and how do we do that uh, we just need to set up the timer to pull this wire high uh, in either case so if you even if you if you configure the wire too high it doesn't mean that it has to be always uh, triggered by connecting uh, wire to the to the ground it could be the opposite it's disconnecting power to the ground so this both configurations could use a positive uh, trigger when the voltage goes from uh, low to high and negative from high to low so in a configuration so when we configure the trigger there's a there's a five uh, different choices there at, uh, the first choice is uh, no trigger at all so once uh, the default configuration as you saw before in other conf configuration uh, videos we didn't even uh, configure the trigger it means it's not going to be used uh, so that's uh, number one the number two is a trigger pulled to the low and the active trigger is uh, high so this is an example of uh, of this we pull the uh, uh, trigger wire to low and we trigger on high again it could be triggered on connecting to the power or disconnecting to the power uh, uh, this is where you can configure number three that uh, it's pulled to the low but it will be triggered 
by the low signal, meaning it's going to be triggered by disconnecting the wire, by disconnecting the, I'm sorry, the switch or the uh, button. So when they connect it, it's high, and when they disconnect, it jumps to low, so this is where you would trigger. Preferred way is, uh, is this, is when we set up the uh, trigger wire, pull to high, and then triggered by the low. Uh, the number five could be considered uh, uh, alternative preferred way uh, is when it triggered by the high signal, meaning it's triggered by disconnecting the button or disconnecting the switch. So here's your choices. It kind of covers you know, all the bases, uh, whatever you want to choose. But All right, so let's take a look at example how it is used. So let's put this away. So we already looked at the circuit number uh, uh, at the uh, configuration number two before is when we uh, without a trigger when we supply power the voltage stays on for a period of time and then, dr and then drops off well we can do the same thing with the trigger so when we supply the power to the, to the timer it doesn't uh, provide output until we uh, until we trigger an event and in this case the trigger would be from low to high so what we're gonna do, we're gonna use this circuit to, to demonstrate it. So one second, where's the conf well, trigger configuration? All right, so as it said in this uh, diagram, uh, we want to set up the function to number two, but we want to set up the trigger to number four. And trigger number four is, uh, is high and uh, active uh, low. So active means once we connect the button to the ground, that's when it's gonna trigger an event. So let's do that. So we're setting up a uh, function to two and trigger to four. And once we uh, trip the button, it should supply power for a period of time. So let's see how we're gonna do that. So I connected the circuit. So the circuit is uh, pretty much uh, the same as in other videos. Uh, we connected the power. This is just a splitter, but it connects the power directly to the timer. Uh, the ground uh, goes uh, to the timer and to the light and the output uh, out of the timer goes uh, to the light so it's, uh, it's this circuit then we connect two buttons uh, for configuration we connected those white and uh, green wires and they connected the white and green uh, wires and uh, ground like here and also connected the blue uh, uh, button between the blue wire and the ground. So this is our trigger two configuration buttons. So let's set it up for the function two and trigger four. Okay, holding two buttons, pushing the power, releasing. So first you need to set up the time. So let's say we want to five seconds. So we push the button for five seconds, one, two, three, four, five, release the button. We don't have any time to, uh, time two, so we don't touch the second the button. Uh, we push the buttons again, release them, and now we can configure the uh, timer function, two, one, two, and the trigger to four. One, two, three, four. Now, if you, mistakenly pushed it uh, too, uh, too many times, you just need to start from the beginning. Uh, disconnect the power and start from the beginning. You can only configure it once during this power cycle. Uh, so you'll just disconnect it and s start it over again. So we configured that, now we can test it. So we supply the power based on the diagram. Uh, the power shouldn't be supplied until trigger. So push the trigger, 
and uh, power supplied for five seconds and turn off push trigger again and nothing happens because this particular cycle is only happened once until the power is removed so only gonna happen once we can push trigger many many times not gonna happen until we recycle the power turn the power back on push the trigger push the trigger again nothing happens but it's wait for five seconds and uh, stops so this is the uh, this is the equivalent of our uh, latching relay uh, circuit but without a relay uh, but this uh, disadvantages of this uh, circuit is that uh, consumes the power even in off state it consumes uh, uh, four milliamps it's four thousandths of the amp with a constant uh, power supply it's not a problem so now we're going to use the same uh, now we're going to use we're going to create the same circuit but with ability to turn uh, the power on and off with the with the button the same circuit configuration is uh, different it's we need to set up to function 16 and uh, trigger still to 4 so let's look at the function 16 and uh, how that works so function function 16 is the interval on with off trigger so what it's going to do once we supply the power uh, nothing happens until the trigger become active trigger become active uh, the output uh, gets uh, power for the period of time t now if you look at the middle uh, portion uh, actually let's let's look at the last portion of it if we just trigger an ev event it will uh, continue for time t and then it uh, stops so it will supply the power to the load for five seconds let's say and it shuts off great now if we look at the first portion of that if we supply the uh, once we trigger an event it will continue it will uh, start the time but if the if we would push the trigger again uh, when the time when the time did not expire yet it will actually turn the turn the output off and another example here if we would uh, push the trigger the time starts as soon as we activate the trigger but even if we hold the trigger it's gonna supply power for uh, the same five seconds so let's try all the, all three of them okay so the First thing we're going to do is we're going to reconfigure the timer to the mode 16 and trigger 4. I'm going to hold two buttons, push the power, release it. And the first thing we're going to do is set up the time. So we set up to, you know, 10 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 seconds. Next, we need to go to the next menu where we set up the timer function. So we hold the uh, two buttons for one second, release them, light stays on. So now we need to push the uh, button, the white button, the first button 16 times. That will go to the 16 uh, function. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six and uh, if you mistakenly uh, push it uh, a couple more times then you can s start over by disconnecting the power and going to the configuration mode again uh, trigger step to four one two three four all right so we set up now we're going to test it so the first thing we're going to do we're going to push the trigger stays on And it stays for our 10 seconds so this is the last portion then we're gonna push the button once and before 10 seconds expires we're gonna push it one more time and it turns off so on off now if you wanna you test this one we uh, we're gonna push we're gonna push the trigger and hold it until time expires we're gonna release the button And we can start over by pushing it once. So this is how this uh, circuit works, uh, or how the I would say trigger works. So that uh, you can use a trigger with a lot of uh, functions. Uh, you just have to take a look at the diagrams, uh, and you'll see there's one 
diagram for the uh, uh, trigger and one without the trigger. Some of them, uh, some of the functions uh, require the trigger, so you'll see only one diagram. Uh, let us know if you have any questions, like this video, if we provided you uh, helpful information, and uh, thank you so much.